Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Getting to Know Our Heavenly Family as we learn about the life of St. Cyril of Jerusalem. The crisis that the church faces today may seem minor, perhaps, when compared with the threat posed by the Arian heresy, which denied the very divinity of Christ and almost overcame Christianity in the fourth century. Cyril was to be taught and caught up in the controversy, accused of Arianism by St. Jerome and ultimately vindicated both by the men of his own time and by being declared a doctor of the church in 1822. Born around the year 312 and raised in Jerusalem, Cyril was well-educated, especially in the scriptures. He was ordained a priest by the Bishop of Jerusalem and given the task during Lent of catechizing those preparing for baptism and the newly baptized during the Easter season. His catechesis remained valuable as examples of the ritual and theology of the church in the mid fourth century. We still have these catechetical lectures of Cyril's that were written down by someone in the congregation. His life began a few years before Arianism, that is the heresy that Jesus was not divine or one in being with the Father, or as we say in the creed today, consubstantial with the Father. And he lived his whole life to see its suppression and condemnation at the end of his life. In the middle, he was victim to many of the power struggles that took place. There are conflicting reports about the circumstances of his becoming Bishop of Jerusalem. It is certain that he was validly consecrated by bishops of the province. Since one of them was an Arian, a Cassius, it may have been expected that his cooperation would follow in the heresy. Conflict soon arose between Cyril and Acacius because of the rival between the nearby sea of Caesarea. Cyril was summoned to a council accused of insubordination of selling church property to relieve the poor. Probably, however, a theological difference in thought and study was also involved. He was condemned, driven from Jerusalem, and later vindicated, not without some association with, and help from semi-Arians. Half his episcopacy was spent in exile, his first experience repeated twice. He finally returned to find Jerusalem torn with heresy, schism, and strife, and racked with crime. Even St. Gregory of Nyssa, who was sent to help, left in despair. They both went to the Council of Constantinople where the amended form of the Nicene Creed was promulgated in 381. Cyril accepted the word consubstantial, that is Christ is of the same substance or nature as the Father. Some said it was an act of repentance, but the bishops of the council praised him as a champion of orthodoxy against the Arians. Though not friendly with the greatest defender of orthodoxy, Cyril may be counted among those whom Athanasius called brothers who mean what we mean and differ only about the word consubstantial. He indeed fought, <coughs> excuse me, fought a good fight in various places against the Arians and orthodoxy prevailed much to his efforts. Cyril had eight years of peace in Jerusalem before he died in 386 at about 70 years of age. Those who imagine that the lives of the saints are simple and placid, untouched by the vulgar breath of controversy, are rudely shocked by history. Yet it should be no surprise that saints, indeed all Christians, will experience the same difficulties as their master. The definition of truth is an endless, complex pursuit, and men and women down through the ages have suffered the pain of both controversy and error. Intellectual, emotional, and political roadblocks may slow people up, like Cyril, for a time but their lives taken as a whole are monuments to honesty and courage. He truly is an example for all of us of remaining faithful to seeking the truth that can only be found in Jesus Christ. In one of his catechesis during Lent, appropriate for us, of course, on this Lenten journey as we journey with Jesus, Cyril wrote, your accumulated offenses do not surpass the multitude of God's mercies. Your wounds do not surpass the great physician's skill. He goes on, have faith and tell the physician what ails you. Let us pray. Father, through Cyril of Jerusalem, you led your church to a deeper understanding of the mysteries of salvation. Let his prayers help us to know your son and to be born into eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. God bless you.